as before, when we were dealing with translational motion, we define things in terms of vectors, and that's going to be useful here again for rotational motion. We have the scalar statement s is equal to r theta. The vector equivalent of that is my vector s is equal to theta cross r. That cross product means that we need a way of evaluating what direction we get from that. We're going to introduce or review, if you already know, the right-hand rule to evaluate these cross products. We have our angle theta here, and rather than representing it as a spinning thing here, we're going to have a specific direction, which is, in this case, pointing upwards to represent this counterclockwise motion in this xy plane. This direction is based on uh, an arbitrary choice of what up or down means. So we could have chosen the other way. We've chosen this way. We're going to stick with this way because it's a right-handed coordinate system. And we get our direction here from that right-hand rule. The right-hand rule means that, well, we have an image here to help with this. One way of thinking about it is that if you align your hand with the coordinate system, by putting your thumb in the direction of my rotational vector, then my hand will curl around in the direction that the object is spinning. Here that means I can put my thumb in that k hat direction or the z direction, and then my hand will curl around in that counterclockwise direction. Here we'll put the i hats, j hats, and k hats so you can see that. And there's another way of thinking about this, which is that you can start in the direction of your first vector, cross in the direction of your second, and end up with your resultant vector from that cross product. So we'll take theta cross r and get s. Here we'll put my hand in the direction first of theta going upwards, and then I'll turn it so I can curl it towards r, and my thumb will now point towards where S is. This is the right-hand rule. You have to use your right hand when doing this. If you use the left hand, you'll get the opposite. What that means is that we can relate I, J, and K using the right-hand rule by noting that if I start in the X direction and curl towards Y, I get K, I get Z. Or I hat crossed with J hat gives us K hat. Similarly, I can start in the j hat direction and curl towards k hat, and I'll end up with i hat. And to round things out, if we start in k hat and curl towards i hat, we end up with j hat. So that's the right hand rule. Whichever way makes sense to you, I think it's very important to be able to have an idea of what direction we're talking about when we're talking about things that are rotating. Let's look at rotational velocity. This is very similar. V equals r omega becomes V equals omega cross r. And directionally, this means that if we're spinning in this counterclockwise direction, that's in the positive k hat direction, and that's counterclockwise. And I, I keep saying this counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and show you. Here is the xy plane. And looking at this from the top there, you can see that we're spinning counterclockwise and that corresponds to this k hat direction. You'll note I've drawn a circle with a dot in the middle. That's notation that I sometimes use. You can think about this as referring to an arrow where the point is coming towards us. So that refers to a vector coming out of the screen or out of the page towards us. Here's a picture of that arrow, and you'll see that we have the dot coming towards us, and then we also have an x going away from us that looks kind of like the flexions on the back of the arrow. So if I have something going into the screen or into the page, it'll be an X. Similarly, if we have my omega pointing down, I can point my thumb with the omega, and now it'll curl in the direction that we're talking about. So when you look at this from the top, that will be a clockwise rotation. And might as well draw this in here as well. That's clockwise, which means that my thumb is pointing away from the screen as we do that. We've done position and velocity. Let's go ahead and do 
acceleration here. My tangential acceleration is r alpha. Vector-wise, that vector is equal to alpha crossed with r. Again, the direction of the cross product matters because it'll give you opposite directions if you start with one versus starting with the other.